What's going on, hockey fans? It's the final Dan K show before a Deneen Cup champion has been crowned. We've been waiting all year. We've been patient. We've been wondering, but let's do that hockey. Let's do that hockey. It's Dan K. It's Lucas Jones, and it's time to break down the NCDC finals. Let's do it, ladies and gents. Welcome back, hockey fans. I love that open. I love it. I love it. But what I love even more are Dan K's three things. And there's not going to be a one, a two, and a three this week. There is going to be a one and two that are necessary. And a third that if we're all tied up, that is if necessary. The only hockey series left for the rest of the year that matters. The NCDC, the Neen Cup Finals are happening this weekend. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, if necessary, at the New England Sports Center, the mecca of junior hockey, man. This is a big time, big rink, and we got ourselves a big time matchup between the two seeded Boston Junior Bruins and the three seeded Connecticut Junior Rangers. But throw seeds out the window, throw records out the window. It's time to break this thing down, and we start looking at a series that this year the Junior Bruins won three games to two. Three to two, though, not a dominating performance. Anybody's game, the last time these two teams faced off, a 6-4 Connecticut Junior Rangers win with Paris and Lancaster both getting chances between the pipes. Lucas, this is a matchup that can go either way. How do you feel about this Rangers-Bruins matchup first look? Well, I mean, I think it's a, I think it's a good matchup. I think the 2-3 and three might be a little deceptive in some, in some circumstances. You know, you think that these teams would be very evenly matched. I think they are. But in certain areas, you know, I, I think that the Rangers have a really great ability to adapt to a lot of things. But adapting is going to be tough when the Boston Junior Bruins do what they do so well. You know, it, it's an issue where the Connecticut Junior Rangers, they're going to have to rely on their scores to create opportunities. And they're going to have to capitalize on those opportunities. This is not a series where you can go one for, one for four on the power play. And it's a perfect perfect segue into our Connecticut Junior Ranger breakdown. It's time to start with the Connecticut Junior Rangers. This is the road team, so we're going to go first with them. A little bit of, a little bit of a baseball style, you know, first ups for the Connecticut Junior Rangers. Led in this one by Coach Jim Hankel. This is a Rangers team with depth, and that scoring depth, that assisting depth, has come from Mr. Max Kuznetsov, who again, I said it before, has taken it to the max in the postseason. Seven postseason assists. For the Max man, for the K man, Kuznetsov has been Kuznets cool, man. He's been so good. Kuznets and pucks after their pass from him. Colin Sline, who's been on all the time, four goals, two assists. Lucas, a lot of forwards that can score the hockey puck for the Connecticut Junior Rangers. And that's a Jim Hankel style right there. Yeah, they're going to have to get in front and they're going to have to directly challenge Yanni Peretz. They're going to have to get right in front of him, get his eyes moving, get those second chance opportunities. And it's going to come from that high-low game. You know, you're going to have to get your guys in deep, win those board battles, and get the puck in front of the net. Your defensemen are going to be, you know, very, very involved at the blue line. Not so much getting shots on net. Parrots has shown that he has a really great ability to track those shots from the blue line. You're going to have to get in close and personal on Parrots. The biggest thing is you absolutely have to limit their special chance opportunities. You yeah. cannot go to the penalty box if you are the Connecticut Junior Rangers. You can't. And you look at, though... You talk about you can't go to the penalty box. What about the last time these two teams played? We always talk about recency bias. When Lucas and I break down these games, these years, when we make our power rankings for the Premier Elite, we always have to look at the most recent results. Most recent game between these two, a 6-4 offensive slugfest between the Rangers and the Bruins that the Rangers won at the Foxborough Sports Center. And that was a game where they took four penalties, killed all four. They were perfect on the penalty kill against this Boston Junior Bruins team. And I agree with Lucas, though. That's not something that's going to live on forever. But what was the difference? What was the difference in the penalty kill game? Why did they become so potent on the penalty kill? Colton Lancaster. Let's talk about this, because this might be the biggest ad in the NCDC this year. Since Lancaster has taken over the net, he's had a sub-3 goals against average. He's had a plus-920 saves percentage. And he has really 
really cool things in the back end for this Ranger squad. Yeah, and, and having a goaltender like Lancaster, I think, creates some offense as well. It gives your defenseman the ability to really get a little bit deeper into the offensive zone. They're not always worried about trying to protect the goaltender if there's a breakaway opportunity. Lancaster has stared down some of the toughest shooters in the USPHL and stopped them. So I think that's a really big asset that they have in Lancaster. I think it will generate some offense. But again, you look at some of the guys on the Junior Bruins side, I mean, and Lancaster and those defensemen are going to be working overtime in this one. They are. It's going to be those zone entry shots, the ability, the hands, the mitts on this Junior Bruins team. We'll get to them in a bit. But Lancaster's 4-0. and He's undefeated as well as this Rangers team. They are unblemished. They are the only team left in the NCDC who has not lost a postseason game. 4-0 in the playoffs. He's faced 131 shots. He's stopped 126 of them. He's got a 1.25 goals against and a .962 saves percentage. To say he's been great would be an understatement. This guy has been so good. And we go to the defensive side of the ice here. And this is going to be a situation. This is where you're going to have to have guys step up. Ole Anderson's a guy, four assists already in this postseason. Number five on the team in points gotten with four. Tied there with Philip Eckberg. Anderson's going to come up, have to come up big. You're going to need a goal out of him in this series if they want to win the title. If they win the title, I'm calling it now, Ole Anderson will have put a goal in the back of the net in this series. Well, it's certainly going to take a, a full team effort to defeat the Boston Junior Bruins in this series. And uh, for a little bit more on that, we're going to go to an interview that I was able to get with coach of the Connecticut Junior Rangers, Jim Hankel. Joining me on the phone right now is the coach of the Connecticut Junior Rangers, Coach Jim Hankel. Coach, thanks for taking the time out of your busy schedule to talk to me today. No problem, Lucas. My pleasure. Uh, first of all, you know, congratulations. Uh, you know, you guys have uh, made it through the regular season and made it through the playoffs, and now you're playing in the championship game this upcoming weekend. So talk to me a little bit about you know, the regular season, and then the playoff road to get where you are? Uh, yeah, I mean, at this point of the year, it's, you know, we feel very fortunate to still be able to play. Um, you know, every time we, we played a game um, and going into the playoffs, I just, you know, kept saying to the guys, hey, I just want seven more days with you, just seven more days. And, um, you know, we've been lucky. You know, we, we've uh, been lucky from, from the, the way we finished the end of the regular season, put ourselves in a good situation to be, uh, in the top three, which was a, a team goal of ours, um, you know, and, and putting ourselves in a situation where we could avoid, um, you know, what we went through last year, which is you run into a juggernaut um, of, of the Islanders Hockey Club last year, the Hitmen this year, and the potential 1-4 matchup, and that was a goal of ours. And, you know, we were able to, to kind of tighten the screws a little bit and make sure we stayed out of that situation. Um, and, and by doing so, uh, by vir virtue of, of the Cyclones playing great series against the Hitmen, uh, finding a way to win two games, uh, we were able to host the second round. Um, and each team is a different challenge. Um, so we're, we're on to the next challenge now of trying to figure out how to, to um, take down the big bad Bruins. Yeah, so, you know, it certainly are the, the big bad Bruins, an organization that has kind of been a contender year after year. Uh, so does any kind of special work go into preparing for a championship game against a team like Boston? Uh, yeah, there's a lot of work. Um, you know, trying to figure out how to beat the number one goalie in the league and Yannick Peretz. Uh, trying to figure out how to slow down the junior Bruins power play. Um, you know, and in addition to that, trying to figure out ways to um, figure out coverage for uh, Parasunko, for uh, you know, Robbie Griffin, uh, Matt Allen. Riley Pratson, these guys put up huge points, and uh, it's going to be a huge challenge for us. Um, there, there's there's no doubt about that, but um, it's day by day, and we go through different scenarios each day. We talk about different aspects of the game. Um, you know, we've we've got a methodology we've followed last year that proved us pretty well uh, going into playoffs, and uh, it's done pretty well for us this year. So it's it's something I think is is getting through to the guys and able to kind of work through it and not overly tax the guys but have it be more of a mental workout than anything else so if it happens in a game it's it's second nature so you guys have had a, a pretty good run through the regular season but especially so through the playoffs um so what has been the biggest impact on the team's success through the playoffs did you guys make any changes or has any particular player stepped up to the plate uh i think it's been a concerted effort uh from everybody in the room um i, I think we realized 
probably right before Christmas break, uh, when we had that little mini run, I think the guys kind of realized the potential. Um, and we came out of break, we sputtered a little bit. And I think once we kind of found our footing a little bit, um, and, and we started to kind of look through the schedule and who we were playing, uh, and how we were going to be able to, to win more hockey games than lose. Uh, I think once they realized, Hey, we should come out on the winning side of more of these than the losing side, uh, guys started to ask more significant questions versus how are we going to beat them? Uh, and they went into more detail of, Hey, they do this on the four check. How are we going to break it? How, you know, specifically with Syracuse, they play a one, three, one, how are we going to break it? And we spent tons of time going over it and, um, you know, it's not easy. It's hard to do. Um, but we were fortunate enough to, to get out of that situation and, and come out with two wins and not have to be taxed in a three game series. Um, you know, and then you, you face it with, you got McCoy, Mancuso and Di Stefani coming up uh, in the second round. How are we going to shut them down? What are we going to do? Um, to say it's one person in particular, I can't, um, to say it's a whole group of guys, uh, I can't. Um, and the one thing I could say is, is the captains in the locker room have been the driving force behind it. Uh, they've believed from day one. Um, and with that, you know, it's, it's been easy to kind of push them a little further each day and each week. Um, but I think it's, it's more of them asking specifics. That's really kind of changed the focus of just going into hockey games where we started to break down things a little bit more specific, uh, and, they've been asking so it's not something i forced upon them they've been asking and it's uh it's for them it, it's been an easy task to understand so and last question for you coach um you know coming into this series you know you guys are are the underdog here so you know do you and the guys do you relish the challenge and the opportunities presented by being the underdog in a situation like this uh yeah i mean listen there's no question we're the underdog um you know look up and down their roster um, you know, nine all-stars, uh, all-star coach, um, coach that's been here before has won championships, um, you know, countless amounts of D one players, uh, top goalie in the league, top defense, one of the top two defensemen in the league in Luke Rowe. Um, you know, and then look at the scoring aspect. I mean, it's Johnny Miller, Sasha Parasonko, Matty Allen, Robbie Griffin. Um, we are the underdog. We, we don't have what they have. Um, and you know, for us, it's do everything in our power to limit chances and stay in games as long as we can, uh, very similar to the Cyclones. Uh, and I think if we can stay in games, we can be very much like the Cyclones and have ourselves a chance to win towards the end of the game. Uh, it's not going to be easy. We know that. Uh, it's a daunting task, specifically heading up to Marlboro. Um, you know, special teams is going to be a huge factor in, in who wins this series. Um, and I think at the end of the day, um, you know, I, I think it'll be two slash three uh, very good hockey games, uh, depending on you know how we play. Uh, you know, we can potentially force it to a game three, um, but it's it's going to be some very good hockey games, and and for us, it's just trying to find a way to keep it close, uh, give ourselves a chance at the end. Thanks a lot, Coach. Uh, we'll be looking forward to working with you and and seeing the guys this weekend. Awesome. Thanks, Lucas. I appreciate it. And uh, soon enough, we'll be in, uh, in sight of each other and we can have some, some in more in-depth conversation. Oh, we are. We're definitely looking forward to it. All right. Thank you. Great interview by Lucas Jones there. The Connecticut Junior Rangers, Coach Jim Hankel, ready for this one. Remember, that was Dan Kay's pick day one of the Dan Kay Show 2018-2019 edition. We asked the question, First 10 minutes of our show for the entire year. I think we've done 20 million hours of episodes now. I picked the Connecticut Junior Rangers as my team to win. But now we go to the Boston Junior Bruins who come into this series as the favorite, not just getting the home ice advantage, not just the favorite in standings, but I think the favorite right now nationwide. The thought is this Junior Bruins team is the team to beat in this series. Lucas, where does all that success for the Junior Bruins derive from? Well, it, it starts from the first line ends in the fourth line, then starts up again on the first line defensive <laughs> squad and goes all the way back to the third line, including any roving guys that might show up for the day. I mean, this is a systems team through and through. You know, I, I've talked about them a little bit in the past. I've kind of likened them to, you know, the basically almost like an evil empire in the sense that they are so talented from top to bottom. They have so much. It feels like they're everywhere on the ice all at once. There's yep. no 
one weakness you can exploit. There's no side of the ice that's weaker than the other. There's no bad line on this Junior Bruins team. And I think that comes from just how incredible the organization is at developing these players from you know the younger guys all the way up through that organization until they hit the NCDC. They have just ended up with you know just phenomenal players. It, it really does give, I think, credence to the saying, the cream of the crop, the cream always rises to the top. Is that a, were you referencing a nah, jump, jump, everybody, jump, jump, in case you didn't get the reference. Let's keep going, though. I look at the top of this scoring from the from the forwards, and, and I see a guy for the postseason, at least, Matty Allen here. Matt Allen, two goals, three assists, five points for him. He's averaging a point a game in the postseason. They played five, one four. This is a team that has not scored the puck in bunches in this postseason. They've had trouble scoring the puck. Matt Allen's a guy who's had a three-point game against CJR this year, early in the season. He's a guy that plays a lot of scoring roles for them. But I'm looking down the list here, and I'm seeing guys that if I'm Coach Mike Anderson, I'm ready to give that Dan K pep talk, that Dan K bump pep talk here. Now, I'm looking at my boys, and I'm saying, hey, Johnny Hockey, Johnny Hockey, Malera, man, I'm looking for you right now. Two goals, one assist here. But this is a guy who went 27-27 and 27 in the regular season. 27-27 and 27 guys don't put up two goals in the postseason. They put up two goals in the first period of game one of the NCDC Finals. That's what I'm looking for from Johnny Hockey Malera. I look at Robbie Griffin, my centerman, man, a D1 commit, a guy who has silky mitts, a guy who you can't keep out of the zone, man. This guy's getting into the attack zone, this guy's crossing the blue line when he wants to. You look at Sasha Persunko, a World Junior Championship star, and you say, Sasha, man, let's start creating, let's put those goals up. I could really see this Junior Bruins team, with everything churning, putting up a real, real big offensive performance early in Game 1. Yeah, and I think, you know, you talk about sort of an underperforming Johnny Malera. That should worry the Connecticut Junior Rangers. And the best is it's underperforming in the sense of two two goals in the well, system so, postseason, guys locking it down. So exactly. So, I mean, normally you'd say, like, oh, one of the guys isn't, isn't scoring. But I think that should worry the Rangers because Malera is going to come into this game looking – to make a difference, looking to put those Johnny Hockey numbers up on the board. You talk about a guy like Robbie Griffin, who is an absolute assist machine, 10 power play assists in the regular season, and then you think to yourself, Sasha Parasunko, leading point getter on the team, 18 goals in the regular season, 12 power play assists. Yep. The junior Bruins' strength on the power play is a huge asset to them, especially if the Connecticut Junior Rangers go down early, because then the Junior Rangers have to start fighting back, and what happens when you're fighting and clawing? You take penalties. I was going to say you scratch people. Well, that would, I would imagine, would be a penalty. That would probably be Two a penalty. Two minutes for scratching. You know what would be a penalty? Doing doing a segment on the Boston Junior Bruins and not mentioning Yanis Peretz. This guy, a Kinnipiac commit here, D1 talent, a uh, higher than D1 talent. There are guys that are D1 guys. There are guys who need a whole new level of NCAA hockey to go play in. And this guy's been that good. He's 4-0-1. The only loss, an overtime loss for the Northern Cyclones, was scramble in front of his net. One went home. He's got a sub one goals against average. When you want to talk about just ridiculousness, that's ridiculous. That's unfair. You can't beat a team if they give up less than a goal. That's something that we can agree upon. Nobody's ever scored .99 goals, and that's what he's got, a .99 goals against average. He's got a .968 saves percentage. So all the great you can say about Colton Lancaster on the other end, he's going to be looking right in the mirror on the other end. He's going to be looking at the guy. And if you're Colton Lancaster... This whole year, you've heard Yanis Peretz is the best net miner in the NCDC. You've heard it from us. You've heard it around the nation. You've heard it from scouts. Colt Lancaster has a chance here to put himself on display, to put himself out in the spotlight, biggest series of his life, biggest weekend of his life between the pipes, and match up with Yanis Peretz. And this guy, Yanis Peretz, cool as a cucumber, man. This guy is cooler than the other side of the pillow. He, he does not ever waver between the pipes. If you ask me uh, who's the who's the calmest netminder I've seen, I'd say you need Paris in a big game. Uh, it's going to come down to goaltending for sure. You have potent offenses on either side, so it's going to have to come from the goaltenders who will need to limit those second chance opportunities in front of the net and stand on their heads against some of the league's fiercest shooters. And now, Dan, uh, I think it's time to go to an interview with Coach Mike Anderson of the Boston Junior Bruins who had a little more to say about how special his squad has been this year. We're joined now by Coach Anderson of the Boston Junior Bruins. Coach, thanks for taking the time to talk with me today. I'm sure you've got a lot on your plate getting ready for the games this weekend. Yeah, it's a fun week. Looking forward to it. 
Definitely. Uh, you know, we are too. First of all, congratulations on making it through not just the NCDC season, but as well as the playoffs to get here. Um, you know, to start off, let's talk a little bit about that road, you know, making it through the regular season and then, you know, getting through the playoffs. You had a little bit of an interesting road to get here. We, we did. It's kind of the tale of, tale of two regular seasons, to be honest with you. We left to such a great start. And then, you know, the middle of our year, we really had a hard time uh, keeping momentum going and, and staying consistent. Um, you know, we were committing kids to Division One schools and to colleges through that process. So we were having a lot of success off the ice. We were just very inconsistent on the ice. Um, but, you know, I really felt probably two weeks left in the regular season we had come out and played a couple games uh, that, that, you know, kind of uh, reinstilled our confidence in our players. And I think, um, you know, the guys kind of understood that they had recommitted to what they were doing and um, just in time. Yeah. And you, you talk a little bit about, too, the, the commitments. You know, that's what kind of what the NCDC is, is focused on is getting those kids to the next level. The Boston Junior Bruins have just such a, a good record of track record of commitments and on top of that you guys are contenders you know year after year in the USPHL and the NCDC what goes into building such a successful program year after year well you know this this program was successful long before I I got here uh, I think it I think it's to a point where it sort of feeds on itself and you know from our perspective for guys that um you know, are either already committed to Division One schools, uh, you know, and and like the option locally, um, you know, of playing close to home and, you know, being around friends and family and, and understanding that, you know, the uh, competitive nature of um, how they're pushed here, how they're challenged, uh, both from our league, but also just within our program by our coaches, their opportunity to develop and grow as a player is as good here. Uh, as it is anywhere else and we've had tremendous success over the years committing players to division one schools and i think that's really attractive you know to kids that that are close um specifically with some east coast schools and kind of need a a year where they know they're going to play uh, they know they're going to get the exposure that's necessary um you know in order to in order to get their deal done and we've had a lot of success with that and, uh, you know, so now let's talk about championship weekend, you know, rapidly approaching here. What kind of preparation goes into um, getting ready for the NCDC championship? Is it different from another weekend of games? No, I don't think so. I, you know, I think, I think it can be dangerous. Um, you know, these guys have played 55 games kind of leading up to this point. Um, but we all understand what we're playing for, right? That's uh, that, that goes... That goes without saying. We worked extremely hard to to have an opportunity uh, to play this weekend. So I think it's just about getting your minds right, uh, being focused. You know, making sure that we get the rest that we need. You know, we finished our semifinal series on Monday. Connecticut finished on Saturday night. Um, so we just want to make sure that we're fresh, uh, both mentally and physically. You know, we've got plenty of time here throughout the week to get the preparation done that we need to. And it doesn't all have to be done on the ice. Um, so come Saturday, I think everyone will be focused and excited. And I said, it's just trying to win two more hockey games. Uh, last question for you. What's, what's the mood been like from the guys throughout the playoffs and towards the end of the season? You talk about, you know, success kind of feeding on itself. Was that the case here? The guys, you know, kind of getting themselves fired up as they moved through the playoffs? Yeah, for sure. And it's kind of what I was alluding to. You know, I said with a couple of weeks left in the regular season, we could kind of see it turn, you know, back in our favor again is that, you know, uh, these kids are really into it. You know, that series, you know, first of all, with Bridgewater as a team that beat us four out of five during the regular season. And, you know, we had to had to kind of be able to turn the tables on them there and uh, just to get out of the first round. And then, you know, a Cyclones team that, geez, I mean, that was, you know, that was one of the, you know, one of the most tightly contested series I, I've ever been a part of as a coach. I mean, that was, that was an absolute battle. And that's just a, you know, those are a couple hockey games that our team doesn't win uh, earlier in the year. Our habits weren't good enough. We just weren't there, um, you know, in particular through the middle part of the season. So, you know, these kids are committed. They're super excited. Uh, I think they're very focused and, um, you know, they, they, they want to, you know, they want to have an opportunity here to finish, uh, to finish on top. So. 
Coach, thank you so much for the opportunity to speak to you. I know we are looking forward to covering the championship this weekend, and we're looking forward to working with you there. Yeah, looking forward to it as well. Thanks. Thank you. All right, it is time for the final empty net before a Deneen Cup champion is crowned. I say that because the Dan K Show isn't over after this, Lucas, and I think that's what this empty net is all about. It's about telling the folks what's next on the Dan K Show. And I think the Elite and Premier folks that watch us each and every week, I think they'll be happy to know that the All Dan K and All Lucas J teams are coming up. Yep, we're going to have All Dan K, All Lucas J teams for the NCDC, the Premier League, and the Elite League. We'll be choosing our four forward lines, three defensive lines, a couple of goaltenders. Our deep pairs there. We're going to have some nice pairs, some pairings that are going to be absolutely stupendous. Stupendous. Stu... I don't know. I lost it. And we'll have three netminders. And we'll have a coach. We'll have a GM. We'll have an owner. We're also going to have our, uh, a broadcaster as well. And we're going to have some cool announcements, some cool fun. And that's going to be a great way to kick off an offseason that the Dan K Show is really looking forward to. Yeah, we are looking forward to the offseason, but I think we're looking forward to that championship first, and, and Dan's got some cool stuff he's ready to pull up on Twitter. I got some real cool stuff. I'm looking here from the Charlotte Rush, and the Charlotte Rush reached out to say they continue to lead the way in terms of player development. They got a Rookie of the Year with Wilkes University there, a big-time year for Tyler Barrow, who we said, this guy was like a wheelbarrow, man. You put goals inside, and this guy just takes them to the net. He's an absolute scorer. He's an absolute game-changer. These guys leading the way in commitments, man, nonstop. Look at R.C. Lake and the Richmond Generals. Again, on local news, a great job by Natalie Callab out there with local news, friend of the Dan K Show. Uh, they're, they're doing some work uh, talking about their, their ring unveiling that will happen soon. They're, they're getting all their end-of-the-year merch, their uh, championship merch. We always love to see a little championship gear. Uh, Lucas and I, we just got back from Florida. That's why we're a little more tan than usual. It's always tough to get us to leave Florida. It's always very nice down there. But we are going to be going to the opposite of Florida. We're going to be going up to the chilly Marlboro, Massachusetts for a big time bond burner at the New England Sports Center. In the words of the old, uh, the old Fab Five uh, battles here in the Pennsylvania area. Dan K, Lucas Jones. Lucas, I got one more thing actually before I let you do your parting words. I forgot to mention... Kevin Drevich, the Bandits premier, going to Worcester State University. Worcester State University, a big-time commitment for him. I said they are on Worcester for some reason. Worcester State University. And big-time one for Kevin Drevich. He'll be joining his brother Logan, another former Boston Bandit. Lucas, parting words. Great job, Lucas. Great job, Dan. Lucas is going to be heading up Friday, getting video with the Connecticut Junior Rangers and Boston Junior Bruins. He'll be setting up all of our equipment. He'll be setting up all of uh, the hockey TV equipment. He'll be doing just about everything you can do under the sun to make sure this works. I will then mosey along on Saturday, show up, along with Alex Thomas, who will be joining us, the Boston Junior Bruins absolute, absolute expert on the Boston Junior Bruins, absolute expert on NCDC hockey, on hockey all around, man. This guy is the up-and-coming star in the hockey world. Get ready to see him all over the airwaves as the years go on. Dan K, Lucas Jones, Alex Thomas will bring you the NCDC Finals from the New England Sports Center. Boston Junior Bruins take on the Connecticut Junior Rangers for all the marbles in Marlboro. That's what it's all about this weekend. When Dan K's on the mic, it's always hockey night. When he hits a really cool note like all the marbles in Marlboro, he gets stoked. That's going to be my thing on the broadcast. How many times are you going to say that? Every game, every whistle, every stoppage. Every stoppage? For all the marbles here in Marlboro. Tough to say. Yeah, it's going to be miserable.